This illustration continues the use of Type P cable. Uh, the Part 3 title is Construction Specifications, which uh, is in article, this new Article 337. And uh, instead of reading the same information again in the purpose of the change, uh, I'm just going to pick up in the uh, last sentence of the paragraph. So count down three lines, and we're going to pick up Article 337, Part 3, covers conductors, equipment grounding conductors, insulation, sheath, and marking. Uh, and that, that is the, uh, what we want to look at here. So uh, no use repeating the same information. Now, notice we'll look uh, and review first the type uh, cable, uh, which is general part three right next to the adjustable speed drive system that you see there. And notice the conductors, if we will know about the conductors inside the type P cable, we'd go to 337.104. If we were interested in the equipment ground and the requirements for it, we'd go to 337.108. The insulation now that would be surrounding the conductor, and then you'd have the outer jacket and everything, 337.112, and then the sheath is 337.116, and then the marking required on the cable so we can identify it is 337.120. Now, uh, let's uh, look at the uh, cable coming into the very top of the adjustable speed drive. Notice the single overcurrent device for both conversion equipment and bypass equipment devices if provided by 430.130A as in Apple and B as in Boy. Uh, if we uh, review uh, right below that equipment, then notice uh, cable provides increased reliability. It improves safety because it's very durable and reduces maintenance that we would uh, otherwise have to pull on a conduit, uh, the connectors, the fittings. Because when we look at the uh, Annex L and 70B, we're supposed to do a, a, you know, a check on these connectors and, and it gives you the interval interval check for couplings and connectors and uh, corrosion problems, things you might uh, have at these uh, terminations of uh, uh, using connectors and couplings to uh, couple the conduit together. So here, that's just one piece from point to point, and there's nothing there to maintain. So that's one uh, good thing about 70B, reducing uh, your maintenance requirement. Now, the conversion equipment itself is the bullet right next to the bottom of the adjustable speed drive in the title of the call-out conversion equipment. And we would review 430.130A and B, as in uh, Apple and Boy, and 430.131. Now, the motor itself, to calculate the conductors, we'd see 430.122A, and we would also look at the informational note plus B as in boy for your overcurrent device. And we pretty well have that. But notice this voltage, uh, 600 uh, volts or less. Uh, you could also get the cable in 2 kV, 8 kV, and 15 kV. Now you're in the new Article 311 and you're in Article 490. But plus you're looking at the adjustable speed drive based upon its uh, voltage and then the motor itself. So we all know the benefits of adjustable speed drive. And I believe that's part 10 to Article 430 that gives you the installation rules. And of course you can pick up the UL standard uh, uh, 1580 that gives you more additional information about inside the drive. But we know that 90. Seven says we're not to go inside that drive and reconnect conductors and add stuff without getting permission uh, from the manufacturer. And in some cases, the authority having jurisdiction will want a nurdle put on it in accordance with 110.2 uh, 
or 500.8a for classified areas. So we, we always have to keep this in mind. What is the voltage? And then what part of Article 430 deals with the adjustable speed drives and sizing the conductors and the overcurrent device to allow the motor to operate and run?